Hey guys, it's in the middle of the night again. I feel like I'm just making these videos in the middle of the night because everything interesting is happening at night, at least for my time zone. But it's in the middle of the night. Yesterday, 11 in the evening, we got the patch. And then two in the night or in the morning, we also got the improved patch that fixed certain things that got up with the changes that have been done within the patch. So here we are now with patch notes. I, we finally have our patch notes and I will go through the patch notes with you and then we can also have a look at the things that have been changed maybe outside of the patch notes. The patch itself was surprisingly, it was surprisingly, I don't want to say small because it still was five gigabyte, but it was surprisingly little changes. I would have assumed that there was like more in it, but maybe, maybe I'll just had like very high expectations. It's like easy to get an overview of everything changed in this patch. So let's go into everything that has been changed. Start with the balance patches and with the Bloodstalker. The Bloodstalker has now a reduced piercing damage from 85% to 65%. Players who are grappled get now a 60 second immunity buff from being wept by the Bloodstalker again. And I think that's a very good change because that way you cannot simply keep people wept if they if like if the webbing loses then you can just web them again especially in pvp it's a little bit unfair because you need to give people the chance either to get away or you need to get people the chance to counter an attack like this somehow and i think this 20 second immunity buff is a good solution now when you are webbed you're also not longer unequipping your melee damage and i wonder if that means that you can attack the bloodstalker that is webbing you. That would be also something interesting. Um, if you're trying this out on PvP, tell me if that's the case. I would really like to know. The next creature that got buffs and nerfs was the Wyvern. And while we assume that the Void Wyvern gets a little bit of a uh, yeah, quality of life and a balance patch, we did not expect the other Wyverns to also be affected by it. But here we are. The Wyvern HP gained per level has been reduced by 20%. And I assume those are either the ones, the wild levels, so you get 20% less to begin with per level or it might be the levels that you level on your Vibran. So the amount of life you get per level is reduced by 20%. I will see if I can check this probably probably tomorrow so i will see what exactly it is but it means the vibrance like all of the vibrance have less health then for the lightning vibrant the armor penetration is reduced by 20 percent the lightning vibrant was very popular and i think that it was also very popular on pvp i've seen people only using lightning vibrant because of like the armor stuff but nerfing this and reducing that it ignores the armor or that it goes through the armor is pretty nice it makes for a little bit more balanced gameplay for sure in order if we are nerfing one vibrant we're going to buff another and that is the fire vibrant the fire vibrant was one of the old school favorites of everyone everyone loved to have a fire vibrant and then they got replaced by the lightning vibrant the fire vibrant right click attack which is like the big fire blast that one has been buffed by 30 percent and when you now have a void vibrant it cannot do the right click attack anymore unless it's mounted by a rider one thing that is very interesting that is the base drag weight of the vibrant has been changed the drag weight usually decides over certain things that you can do with an animal or cannot do with an animal And in this case, the drag weight has been reduced. It means overall wyvern are now lighter. They weigh less. And one thing that is affected by this is if you can net gun an animal. And now you are able to net gun normal wyverns. Which is also a big step towards making it more balanced. So in PvP, you could technically net gun a wyvern now. The same way you could do it with crystal wyverns. So all of them, fire, lightning and poison wyverns, can now be netted with a net gun. Now we come to the Noglin. And the Noglin is now targetable by the plant X. But it will take reduced damage from the turret when it's attached to a player. I think before it was completely ignored by turrets or by plant X. So this is now probably helpful when you want to 
protect yourself a little bit from Noglin attacks in PvP. Some of you have told me that it was often used to trap players and it was especially hard on six men because you have a limited amount of players in your tribe to begin with and if those players are gone then you're pretty much screwed. So being able to protect yourself from the Noglin with a plant X is pretty nice. Now let's talk about the net ammo. First of all, the durability when you're using the harpoon gun for net ammo has been nerfed big times, like really big times. So now when you are using net ammo in your harpoon gun, it will damage your gun 2.5 times more than it did before, which means one net gun ammo shot will hurt your harpoon gun as if it was 2.5 arrows shot. Which means if you have two, then it's as if you have shot five. So therefore you want to look for really high durability net guns or really high durability harpoon guns in the future because you do not want to repair them that often. The next thing is that the weight has been increased from 0 0.2 per ammo per net to two. So they are getting really heavy. So you cannot carry a ton with you anymore. You're spamming your inventory full when you do so. And let's talk about the mammoth. The mammoth got two new things. One, if you are buffed by a mammoth and you're riding it, you cannot be dismounted from your creature anymore. This is like a big thing and I think that is helpful for PvP. I have, I have hardly seen people using the mammoth on PvP, if I'm completely honest. I was thinking, I was thinking it would probably make so much sense using the mammoth with its new buff on PvP, but no one did it. That was that was that was crazy to me, especially like when you have like cave, um, like cave protection, and you're you're in like this uh, choke zone, and you want to have your animals buff that are standing in there and and defend. I would think having a mammoth there and boosting all your animals in front would be would be good but apparently no one does that so now you cannot be dismounted from your creature anymore when you're buffed by a mammoth and the drama now gets 40 percent damage mitigation while drumming next next is the big one and that's the shadow main who the shadow main <laughs> So, the Shadow Mane. Uh, we were a little bit scared if the Shadow Mane is going to be broken for PvE. We have some slight changes that also affect PvE, but not in an amount where we were scared about. So let's go through the changes that the Shadow Mane has been facing. First of all, reduce the range of the stun attack targeted horizontally by 20%, which is fine. I think the stun attack has been used in PvE not a ton and like i said earlier all these changes are mainly focused to pvp so if i'm explaining it from a pve point that's because i have never used the shadow main in pvp and i also don't want to pretend i did so you can tell me when you're playing or if you're playing pvp tell me how much these changes will affect your pvp playstyle or your experience let me know in the comments and the next thing is increase the holding space bar jump distance by 20 percent so you can now jump further away when you do the space bar jump which is a nice thing for pve because we use the shadow main for traveling around that is a really nice thing and now reduced how many targets the shadow main can chain stun when right click is held to seven targets from 15 so it was like almost halved by the amount of targets you can have which i think is not even like that terrible especially from our position because i feel like this stun attack was a nice gimmick when you're not playing against other players if we have used this sometimes when we were uh, when we were doing missions especially like the velo mission so we just hit like every animal in there once but i feel like at least for us it was kind of even bad if you would do this chain stun because in the time you would do like this 15 target chain stun you could have done damage before so it was kind of a waste of time so i haven't used that one afterwards anymore even though it looked cool but i haven't used it anymore for pvp i can imagine that it's really nice because you cannot stun like all of them 
uh, and you're kind of limited and you have to have to see where you where you actually jump to stun. Increase the cooldown of teleport attack from 4.5 seconds to 15 seconds and each target added increase the cooldown by 2 seconds rather than 1 second. Increase the length of the immunity buff after a play has been stunned by the shadow main from 30 seconds to 50 seconds. I think that's a big thing for PvP because many of you told me that the stun was really OP and you were probably perma stunned and now almost doubling the immunity buff will probably do a big change for you. And now one thing that also is affecting PvE, so be aware, and that is that the creature's armor is reduced from 124% to 80. And also if you have a low level shadow main, the armor it will get per level is reduced by 35%. I have tested it, 150 tamed one, so 225 shadow main will still have the full armor, but it will only be 80 instead of 124. It is a little bit lower, so you have to be a little bit more careful, but I will see how viable it still is. I mean, if you're completely honest, the shadow main did not get any damage with the old armor value, so having it reduced will definitely also make it a little bit more balanced for PvE. I have not seen any nerfs regarding the damage in any way, so that is good news. So our shadow mains are still viable, especially against bosses and against big creatures. I also tested them against gigas, against wild gigas. It is kind of rough, but it's still working, so that's nice. And that was the shadow main. Then the immunity buff that is given to players is now also respected by creatures that usually do dismount you. So Void Wyvern, Shadow Main, Net Gun and Flashbang will not dismount you when you have the buff by any other creature or any other way. So that is also nice, so you cannot just uh, try to get around with it with another creature. So that is pretty nice. So there are certain other little small changes that had been done and one of it is the Exomech will not fill turrets anymore that have recently fired so therefore you cannot have infinite ammo in your turrets. And now let's talk about the Megalosaurus. It's just like a one-liner here but I think we have to talk about it because the Megalosaurus is a big topic here on this channel. I was talking about that I was hoping they would fix the bug the Megalosaurus has when it comes to using the wrong attack when attacking creatures. And the first thing I pretty much did when the patch was out was starting, in, was starting it in single player because the server version wasn't out yet so I had to play in single player, spawning in some Megalosaurus and then checking if the bug was still present. And I have to make you very sad because the Megalosaurus bug is still there. They will still prefer being in a grabbing loot before really attacking. But all of the attacks they have are now increased. Which makes them in theory better than they were before. They are still bugged so we still have to go with our workarounds that you're not using spy glasses while using the Megalosaurus. And when you're fighting a boss with them that you keep your distance so they can switch into their high damage attack. But overall, so they're doing more damage, but overall they're still broken. And I'm not sure if they maybe come back to that at some point. I can also assume that it is maybe another team that is working on the buffs instead of working on the fixes. But the Megalosaurus is still broken but at least a little bit more powerful, which also makes them better against the dragon boss. I will try this one more time, probably tomorrow, to see how strong they are now. But that is at least good news for everyone who wants to use the Megalosaurus for boss fights again, because now they are stronger. I have not seen any other changes done to the Megalosaurus, so other than just buffing the damage they are doing, so that's nice. And Tech Turrage HP is now buffed by 100%. Right now it could be that you are not seeing the change yet, so either place the turret new so they get more life or just wait until or just wait until another patch is fixing this for existing turrets. So they are not updating it in real time, so maybe you have to wait a little bit. So then we have a lot of other things. I'm by the way surprised with how many things I was correct. 
when we did the last breakdown about what is going to be changed there was a lot of stuff i was right i'm very i'm very uh, surprised let's talk about the quality of life changes and they are helpful for everyone first of all industrial grinder slots are increased from 60 to 120 which is amazing especially when you're making chitin out of shell fragments then usually the <laughs> grinder was usually full and over full so that is nice we now get twice the slots in the industrial grinder then the tech cloner register range is increased by three times that is especially helpful for creatures that the cloner would not recognize when you try to clone them. I have had this quite a few times and I will see how much it will affect my gameplay but it's really nice that we now can grab animal information for cloning from a little bit further away. And next the tech surveillance console stack size is reduced from 100 to 5. I don't think you will need 100 tech surveillance consoles so this is probably not quite a quality of light but um, one of the patches that had to be done because otherwise it wouldn't have made any sense. The next thing is something I really appreciate, especially when coming from official servers. When you are holding H on your tech glove equipped, you will see not only your location, but also the upload timer. Before you had to go to an obelisk or to your transmitter and had to check what the upload timer was. And now you can just simply see it on a HUD when you press H on your tech loaf. That is amazing. So no running to a obelisk anymore just to see that you just missed your 15 minutes. Pretty nice, pretty nice quality of life change. Next is the Magmasaur and the Ankylosaurus. And here I kinda predicted a little bit what's going to be the change and that was the auto harvest on the Ankylosaurus. Really nice change. And also the Magmasaur smelting output has been doubled. So it's smelting metal now twice as quick, making it a little bit more viable for actually processing your metal. And the next thing is enable breeding on rock drakes and on Ahatina, which are the snails. So it is actually the snails. I already did a little bit of experimenting with both rock drakes. Pretty much nothing has changed other than mating is enabled. That's all that's changed with the rock drakes. That's all we have. With the snails, it's a little bit different. Their mating behavior is the same as we have with the mewings. So no line breeding happening, no line breeding possible. And also, they have gotten a little bit of a weight buff. They have been buffed from 150 to 600 weight on a level one, which means that is their base stat for weight. I have tried it out a little bit and I can show you that here. I have stuffed one of my level, it was level 3 because it was a snail that I got an uh, that I got a mutation on, but I stuffed it with tech stuff and I could carry it around. So anyone using them as body bags now, anyone wants to use snails as body bags now because they are crazy. <laughs> but there's a reason why they have a weight buff, it's because they are eating cake in order to grow up. And we all know cake is extremely heavy and in order to keep them fat and in order to even feed them they need way more weight so therefore we got a little bit of a weight buff so we can keep them alive and other than that i have not seen any other change on the snails and then there were some more bug fixes as you can see with text riders and max not regaining health then we also had a problem with with mech modules losing durability when released from a crypod that's also not happening anymore two new admin commands which is cheat drain water and cheat drain food with which you can make yourself hungry or thirsty next we have a bug fix where dedicated storages would ignore the modifiers the stack modifiers next we have a bug fix where the dedicated storages would ignore stack modifiers in the config because as you know you do not need a stack mod anymore you can set the stack size for everything in your settings but the dedicated storage apparently ignored those settings but now not any longer then fixing a bug where the plant z would no longer heal dinos and and turned the soap that apparently was bleach 
back to soap because when using soap it would remove textures from some structures. That was some strong soap. <laughs> and also fixed a bug where cosmetics on the shadow main would not retain their color. So this is also fixed. And that was the big patch and also the big quality of life patch. That was everything we have been going through here. There was definitely not a lot that was not put into the patch notes. I was very surprised. There were just like some small things that were not mentioned in the patch notes. But overall everything that I found was named, which I think is nice. Because there's like not big hidden things. Maybe we will find something out later that I had not put any focus on. But for now, that is all. How do you like the patch notes? How do you like the quality of life patch? Let me know in the comments. And yeah, I'll see you later. Have a good one. Bye.